The Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner. I always remember this line. Water, water everywhere, but not a drop to drink. The idea of water being actually, ultimately, as important as petroleum is probably not too far off the mark. Marty Oakley is here with us to talk about uh, the idea of mega corporations, uh, globalist Illuminati groups, uh, big power groups, governments, you name it. All going that there's a stampede on to control drinkable, clean water on this planet. People have figured it out. Something like 70 plus percent of America's groundwater, deep, shallow, it doesn't matter, is now polluted hopelessly and forever. There's no way to really get in there and clean it. It'll have to be cleaned when it's pulled to the surface. So we have we have enormous problems. This is a very big subject. Marty, are you there? Yes, I am. You, you've hit this pretty close about the contamination of our ground and um, what they refer to as percolating groundwater, our yeah. aquifers, Yeah. the contamination. Yeah. I tell you, the more I dig into things, what I'm struck by is the duplicity of this government. Uh, on the one hand, they're telling us we're facing a critical water shortage, critical. And they are trying to um, denigrate agriculture and make it the cause because, of course, they want to stop anything but industrial agriculture. They want the independent family farmer and rancher gone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Key to that is water. And everything requires water. About in 2007, I had come across a bill by Jim Oberstar here in Minnesota. Mm Mm-hmm. And this bill was called the Clean Water Restoration Act. And I thought, gosh, this sounds good because all of our water up here is contaminated with atrazine, every bit of it. And all of the groundwater, all of the groundwater is contaminated with atrazine? All of it? Yes. Uh, They have not tested one waterway, tapped one water vein, um, anything accessed any water from any source whatsoever that does not have high levels of atrazine in it from the constant and continual application to agricultural fields. The problem is not that, you know, agriculture is creating a problem. It's that we have been Monsantoized and everything is chemicals and herbicides rather than a natural method of, of growing food. And, uh, The idea that somehow doing it this way is going to feed the world's hungry, we've already seen it is not, and that it produces more by doing it this way also Mm -hmm. is a fallacy. Mm -hmm. It produces less, Mm -hmm. and the nutritional value of what is produced is is just horrendous. Go ahead. Right. Well, it's. I don't know how the word nutrition can be applied to many of these things anymore. The toxicity level is probably a better indicator than a nutritional level when you're evaluating various foods that have come from Monsanto. Uh, it's, it's, pretty, it's, pretty, it's pretty grim, and I, <laughs> I begin to run out of words to describe how diabolically evil it all is. Yes. And, and the worst part of it is, Jeff, this is uh, affecting our DNA. It is affecting our internal organs. It is affecting our quality of life, and basically our water is, is absorbing all of this. It, it's somehow it is contaminating everything, and when you see them promoting this type of farming and agriculture, and then you hear them screaming that we're facing a critical water shortage, like I say, it's this duplicity that hits me, because at the same time, the EPA has given a free pass to fracking and mining and drilling, and they use hundreds of thousands, if not tens of thousands, of gallons of water per minute for these operations. This is potable water that only 40% of it is reclaimable at all, uh-huh. and at what is reclaimable uh, still is not fit to drink. A reclaimable meeting, we could probably put it on uh, a field somewhere and it might not harm you too much. But it is not drinkable. And this is uh, this constant duplicity. Uh, like I say, screaming, we've got, a, we've got this severe water shortage. We're facing a critical water shortage. 
And then I come across where the Corps of Engineers, the Army Corps of Engineers, has a plan over the next seven years to destroy, blow out 26,000 dams across the country, draining reservoirs, catchment ponds, uh, rivers that have been stopped from flooding much of the agricultural land. Uh, Why would you do this and allow 70 to 80 percent of the available water Uh that they claim we need to Uh flow out to the ocean unused? 70 to 80 percent untouched right out in the ocean. Wow. Yep. And, and 20, 26,000 dams. And turn around and say, oh, we've got this critical water shortage, and you need to stop using so much water. Now, we probably oh, all yeah. could use a little water conservation, no doubt. Well, t- taxing rainwater comes to mind as being one of the most insane things I've ever heard. But uh, oh, going, go, going back to your 26,000 dams, how many of those dams actually produce hydro? Power. Do we know? Uh, do you have a guess I, on that? As far as I can tell, about 28% of them are producing power in one form or another, okay. uh, to one degree or another, I should say. Uh, of course, an issue, what really got me into this was the four dams on the Klamath River, all hydropowered dams. They're providing electricity to about 76,000 businesses and homes. The dams are working just fine. The power plants in them are working just fine. and But they said that they have aged out. And then there's that problem with the aged salmon. Out. The, aged out. Yes. What about nuclear power plants aging oh. out? Come on. This is crazy. Yeah. It, it's exactly. all. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And they talk about, here again, this duplicity. We see them killing all the wild horses out west. They've got them slated to be totally eradicated by 2014, and they keep claiming they're an invasive species. They, they've only been here for 500 years, and that makes them an invasive species. We've got the coho salmon in the Klamath River that was introduced in the early 1900s, but for some reason they're a protected species, and we're going to blow these dams out because the salmon populations have dropped down low. My response to that, of course, is quit fishing. And, you know, if you're that concerned about their numbers, yeah, stop yeah. fishing. They'll, yeah. they'll, their numbers will increase. Yeah. Well, it, but, is said, it is said the planet may largely be vegetarian by 2050, as it is, because of the pressure on food to be raised, mm-hmm. i.e. grains and so forth, and fed to animals. Which, if you've ever read a profile of a, like a pork farm, a large-capacity pork farm, and the pollution and the, the amount of water used... Unreal. Unreal. Yeah. <clears throat> well, one of the problems is, and I, I grew up in farm country uh, in central Iowa, and uh, done on a, a historic basis, a traditional basis, yes, they do produce a certain amount of fertilizer, if you will, but it was usable. It could be used on the fields, which, you know, enriched the soil, regenerated the soil. It was a natural way of fertilizing. It didn't cause contamination. It didn't cause, you know, horrendous problems in the human body. Uh, and, but what, what we have, Jeff, is they basically run out all the small pork producers, and now we have these mega CAFO farms where they have got thousands and thousands of these animals in box cages where they can't even move that are producing massive amounts of dung that is so full of antibiotics mm-hmm. and hormones mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and whatever it's not, else it's, they well, it's, it's not usable for fertilizer it's it's no uh, it's, it's toxic a, waste at this that's point that's right it, that's right it's toxic. toxic waste and you cannot put it on the field so where do you go with this you know, what do you do with this? This is what you've created. Uh, it's full of agrobacterium from the, the genetically modified feeds they're giving them. Uh, this stuff is so toxic that it, uh-huh. they have nowhere to go with it. Right. It's true. There's nowhere to go with it. None. Talking to Marty Oakley, and we urge all of you to click on Marty's name, go to her website. We do post a lot of her articles at rents.com. She is a tireless warrior working for all of us seven days a week. 